We didn't make it to Gudvangen in time, but we'll find a better spot to show you that. First, I have to see my keyboard and pop out the chat. We both have microphones on that are live. Yeah, well, we're gonna have to move. You can't see that at all. Yeah, you can Let's see it from the shadow. Yeah. Right. No, you can't. You gotta see it on the computer. It's um, just relocating real quickly. There. Then we have to. Try put it in here. No, you can't see it. Look on the no. computer. Right. You can't see it. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, but it's a shadow. See? Yeah. It's a computer camera. But if we go there, we can see it. Okay. As long as it's not backlit. We can't see the chat right now, but um, we will in a minute. Okay. Are we live now? Oh, yeah, we're live. Okay. They can hear you, Coach, just as fine. <laughs> we borrowed microphones from a different setting, so I don't have to scream, and you're just as loud wherever you are. <laughs> Hopefully. Hello. Can you hear me? I got the blacksmith with me and his sweater. <laughs> In your face, Finally. Regina, if you're watching. <laughs> Can we see it better from here? It's hard to tell because I can't see my screen, but if we get in the shade. There's a shade here, yeah? Just to That's see. That's good. When the sun tones down a bit. Oh, yeah, you can see that. We can go in and sit by that bench there. Yeah. No, we can. You just have to open the gate. It's not locked, I don't think. Oh, maybe it is. It, no, no, no. Can you see if it's locked? Yeah, it is. Okay, ticketed area now. That's fine. We can see if I get past the sun. There, you can see it anyway. All right. So, Anders, I don't know where we'll sit, but I will show him the view. And put the chat pop out chat on so I can see it. There, oh, wow, we have people. So, yeah, good, good. And you can hear us quite well. So, I have to get used to not screaming because <laughs> this uh, controls the sound either way. So, so yes, yeah, so Carl, because we didn't get good long in time, we had to take pictures uh, because we passed a lot of graves and stuff. And uh, we just apparently <laughs> didn't love Carl enough. No, no, no. But the pictures will be cool. You have to see. So if you look in the description of the chat here, of the um, sending, you'll see Anders' Instagram, and he can show you where we've been already. So hello, I see Elmina is here, my kid's friend, and Heidi, and Graciela is here, and Doro, my daughter Cecilia is here, Aunt Bonnie, Charlotte. I think I've got live chat we need. Yeah, so we can get them all. Hello from the bus stop, says Charlotta. Hello from Borgen Stavshirke, yeah, or the Borgen Stave Church. Anders, you've probably read more about that church considering you're a Norwegian. Do you want to tell them about it? And I'll see if I can find a good place to put this down. It's uh, actually made uh, in 1924. Could uh, try to show it closer. It's a copy of uh, another stave church. No, I'm just kidding, actually. It's not I, a copy I, of I actually, another stave church. I know church. very little about this church, actually. Well, I know it's um, pretty old. Yeah, we could, you know what we could do? <laughs> I'm pretty sure about that, though. Don't tell them, but we could probably read the description over there. <laughs> Should we do it? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go read it. the description yeah. of this church. That one says fire hose, so I don't think that's the right description. It actually it says, please buy your entrance ticket for the Bergen State Church at our visitor center. And it's even translated very in English. It's I very think. informative. <laughs> uh, but is the name written on there? No, actually it just says, yeah, here you can see. What the name is, Borgund, Stavkirch, or Stave Church. Oh, here you are. Borgund Stave Church. But we should have, um, there should be somewhere. It's also a graveyard, which is quite fitting considering where we went to today. And yesterday and earlier this week. But I don't see a sign yet. The museum for this is right there that's where all the information is and technically parking as well but we're well, here well actually after closing. i actually know all this by heart you do so, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the borgen stave church is a former parish church of the church of norway in Ladal municipality <laughs> we can just get it out of the light it'll be fine it's because the camera is trying to adjust for the light i think they can see it we can't but uh, they can it's because my screen is flashing so i'm not cheating at all no no not and, cheating um, at all actually it was uh, the you church can... 
talk to the you um <laughs> you uh you you uh con con was it conducted or no con the conferred? brown wooden church was built in a stave church style around the year 1200. It is classified as a triple nave stave church of the Sogn type. Sogn. One, two, No longer three. regularly used for church functions. It is now a museum run by the Society the for the Preservation of the Ancient Norwegian Monuments. And if you turn the camera around, you'll see the new church The new there, one is red. Which is actually being used as far as I know. That one actually lights up well because the sun is on the right side of it. Yeah. But what is the triangle thing in the middle? I forget. Is it just, uh, it's not storage. I don't know. Maybe. Although, according to the box in front of it, there's a fire hose nearby. Might just be in case. a morgue or something. Yeah, the building is beautiful. It is where the Draugr lives. It's where the I'll Draugr, that's the Draugr where Carl later. is. That's what we did with Carl. That's where we found Carl. Uh, <laughs> you know, for somebody, we didn't get to drag him out here and uh, he didn't even log in. Either he hasn't shouted yet, so we'll see. We have to give him crap if he didn't join the live sending. <laughs> no, I'll be nice. Oh. We need to be nice to him. Okay, be nice, nice to the guy. Draugr. Uh, He's not creepy, got it. He's cute. Look at Pruda knows how to use Wikipedia too. No, <laughs> she did. She no, you it. didn't. Yep, no. yep. Okay. I took a real quick photo. I give up. I, can take I actually cheated. You cheated. I had a cheat sheet with me. Well, look at the modern one because that's very Viking. Uh, yeah. So they say the uh, the bell tower says Garcia. That could be. Uh, yeah. Garcia. Um, Andrea writes. Uh, well, she's my hometown of Duluth, Minnesota. Anyway, um, she bought a couple of foam heads from Joan Fabric, Joanne Fabric and Crafts to. Uh, make other size hats and her noggin is too big for the hat so for a lot of people i have to make them so they fit kind of snug on my head uh, but if i were to make one for myself i'd want it a bit a bit, little bit looser so i get that and then uh, ashley says we had our first meeting yesterday in her local sca group and she wore all the viking clothes that's what a pandemic is for viking clothes can we see it from here if i stand yeah i think if your picture is clear from here, then you can see it. It's just that we're getting a lot of sunlight glare on the screen, so we have to turn from time to time to read the chat. So, Anders. Can you see it properly? Or? I think they can. It's just that it's the glare on our screen, but if you stick your head in front of it, can you? Uh, no, no. It's either me or the safe church, okay? Uh, no, so I either either me in the it. shot or the safe church in the shot. Because if I put my head closer... I'm not going to share the glory with on. the safe church. <laughs> Aren't you glad we got the mics fixed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we borrowed microphones from work. Uh, for this, so because then I don't have to yell. Yeah, we're gonna fix the hair too. I just realized I <laughs> Karen braided my hair. I did a couple days ago, yeah. <laughs> and it's still in there. You didn't think it was long enough to braid, but it is. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, it is better when you're in the shade. Okay, yeah. I'll move to the shade. Awesome. Good. It's easier for me to see when we're in the shade too. Yeah. It's practical for all intents and purposes. Yeah, I think. Let's yeah, see if we can good. sit and tilt it up, maybe. We can probably figure something out. We can figure out. Get yeah. it in the middle, or do you want to sit close to me? I Which can one? sit on this side. For yeah, if you sit too close to me, Carl might get jealous. There we go. That's right. I took off with Carl's roommate <laughs> to uh, to hide my shoes, though, because they're not very Viking. Let's see. I, we did stop and just get Viking dressed. Oh, the other thing is I can sit further back. Yeah. No, that's kind of cool. It's very practical. We might have to blow the chat up a little bigger, though, because I cannot read it that far back. Yeah, I'm getting too old to, Ruta says we're perfect to see on this uh, distance here. You're not allowed to say that because you're younger than me. <laughs> I'm old. I'm so old. There, now I can see the chat a little better. But okay, you get to hand me the null binding thing. There you go. All right, so do you know what this is? Anybody recognize this? If that, if I give you a hint, there's, that's the blacksmith. There's some more green uh, yeah, wool for some you. More, just the finished products after that. Some more green wool. Oh, you're handing me a lot of stuff now. Some more green no, wool. No, you're handing here. me things I don't need, <laughs> just the ones that are finished. I'm colorblind, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, like they look like something. Okay, I have to well, tie my hair It's up. a Norwegian uh, way, way of saying it is it's allowed to make an attempt. So yeah. I tried to trick you all. To think oh my God, that church is beautiful. I actually am. I am pretty colorblind actually because when people post something with the red uh, writing on mm -hmm. something on Instagram, for example, and there's a green background, I'm really difficulty <laughs> seeing it. Yeah. So it's uh, it's very confusing. But it's um, that's probably why I'm using like black and white all the time. Like if it's a mm -hmm. black background or a dark background, I use. Uh, it's good white. that I'm making you this it's red easier. sweater. Yeah, yeah, it's I very know. nice. <laughs> I like red, so it's very very nice. Oh, it's Thank getting you so much. 
Well, it's almost done for intents and purposes of sweater, but it's it almost isn't. actually the same color as the grass. It I mean, is the grass same. Yeah, red, grass actually. is red. This is really exciting for me. <laughs> it's yeah. a new experience. <laughs> it does look better with bright light on it. But, I'm really uh, excited about the sweater, by the way. I think I we tested much, it out uh, earlier. Yeah, you have. We have this much more to go on and to be yeah. done. Yeah. But so, it's uh, not going to be done. I'm going to get warm now. Because and, uh, yeah, you are. It's it's in the nick of time, actually, Karen, because. <laughs> It it's only a, took eight, what, a little over a no, year? No, but it's like it's the season to, to get it now. So, you know, it's going to get colder and colder now. We're at <laughs> week 62 <laughs> and I was already working on this for three months before, <laughs> before we started YouTube. So the sweater has been faithfully following, I think, since episode one. <laughs> so this little tick counter is a... But no, it's not quite done yet. It's going to... First, I have to do a little more length because it's on here on him now. And he wants it down to here with uh, some thumb hole things, so he can both roll it up and thumb hole. But it doesn't need to. Oh yeah, you can see that quite well. The tapering of the sleeve. It does not need to taper anymore, so it'll just go straight now from here. Thank you, the sweater. Uh, how much does it weigh? Oh Jesus, hold that. I'm gonna make a hazard guess and it's say it's about 30 grams, maybe. No, I think we're 35, a kilo. maybe. No, you fail as a blacksmith. No, I'm just kidding. Each one of these five <laughs> kilos. Each one of the color shifts is a 50 gram skein of yarn, so we can go that way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14. Now you see how you can trick Karen into doing the work herself. You know? 15, 16, <laughs> 17, about 18. Yeah, it's almost a kilo. It's yeah. about just under 19 and we're not done yet. Nice. But what else? You, yeah, you wanted thumb holes. Yeah. So it goes to here. Yeah. With thumb holes. And now I will stop talking so fast because we were online on time. <laughs> <laughs> and you want slits yeah. so that you can bend in it because right now it fits you almost like a mini skirt and we can't have that. Nope. Not gonna work. No, nope, there's no. It's not allowed to make the blacksmith sexy. No, you cannot make the blacksmith into a argir, <laughs> as we call it. I, okay, you have to explain that one. Okay, argir means um, uh, in the Viking age you had the term that they were not quite as liberal as we are today. So uh, I think I've uh, said it before, maybe. Yeah, you probably have, one, but we have something like. Well, anyway, but there's I'll, always I'll just somebody new. Quickly summarize yeah. it. It means that a guy, a man, should not do something that a woman typically does. Mm -hmm. uh, probably. Because if you can carry a log across uh, somewhere, yep. you should do that. And mm -hmm. men were kind of expected to do stuff like that. Yep. If a woman could do that, she would probably be, there wouldn't be any problem her doing it. Because, well, uh, if you're strong enough, whatever, it's cool, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but for, for a man, it was a great shame to do that. And the, the term actually originates with, it actually literally means the rece uh, receiving uh, party of a homosexual intercourse. So it's, uh, if happened. you're the inactive part, then you're uh, damned and doomed and uh, expelled from society. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're the active part, it doesn't matter. It yeah. wasn't any such rules against that, strangely enough. Um, but it's probably because people, like, yeah. people died, uh, children died all the time, and you need it as much procreation as you could. Oh yeah, you and so. I are Viking senior citizens. And oh yeah, me more so because I'm older than he is. In the uh, in the Viking age. Yep. So it's like a uh, average uh, lifespan of 35 years or something. That makes us wise. It makes us old and wise. wise. Let me scratch my beard. It's like, why <laughs> is the banana curved in German? Why is the banana so, curved? Uh, Hand me the phone because I got to keep an eye on uh, battery power. And uh, the gonna... term algae is, uh, it went to such an extent that uh, mm -hmm. to, to kind of point out the seriousness of saying that to someone, if I say to uh, someone, some other guy, you are argi, his, it was, um, he would be expelled from uh, society as a needing, as an expelled person. Yeah. Uh, unless he challenged me into a death fight. That's the seriousness of it in the Viking age. So they had a massive focus on that. Ah, Arlene's here, by the way. She says, so can women, uh, so women can do all the work a man, was it? I'm a little too blind for this. Uh, so women can do all work men can do men's work. Wait, so women. M women. Uh, oh, no, were, I read that wrong. So women no, can do all work men can no, only uh, do men's work. problem if a woman could carry a log. Yep. 
basically. But it, but for a man to, for example, needle bind or to uh, sit inside and sew mm. or uh, do stuff that is uh, physically uh, easier on the body. Yeah. Even though it's uh, up for discussion, what is actually easier for the body? Because you will get arthritis from doing things uh, repetitively over a number of years. Yeah. So, but the heavy lifting stuff uh, yeah. was not reserved for men, but hmm. the easy uh, stuff kind of, or easy, you know what I mean, uh, was reserved for the women. So that would make you an argi and yeah. you would be expelled from society. Okay, There's so men can't from, do women's work? Because there's a lot of men who men need to cannot do women's work, but women could uh, do men's work if they were strong enough. So it's. Uh, and would needle binding actually be women's work in those days then? Because I would say needle binding would be men's work then. They I made don't know. There's no table. way of knowing, so really. Uh, hmm. But it seems to me that the term uh, revolves around uh, very. Uh, can very see the wool is dry. <laughs> very physical work, really. So. Yeah. Uh, but I, <laughs> the thing is. When they find skeletons from the Viking Age, uh, mm -hmm. they are almost equal in size. So there wasn't really that much of a difference between a woman and a man when it comes to size and probably also strength. So this mm. seems to be some kind of uh, like uh, gender uh, focus uh, that they had culturally for some reason. I don't know why, but yeah, uh, Carl has maybe, the thing that he talks maybe about. Maybe it started off as it's not allowed to not procreate with a woman. And then, uh, That's a good rule. so you have more children. My kids are And on then here. maybe it escalated <laughs> from there. Maybe it was like, oh, yeah, you can't do that. And then everything that would be a woman's uh, typical mm. uh, thing to do would so be. So, for my prohibited. female daughter who is online, of course, female and daughter is definitely the same thing. You heard that from Anders no procreating. It's not allowed. It's not allowed. <laughs> she also says old people are weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. True that. Weird. Yeah. Uh, it's a good thing we're not old. <laughs> well, no, it's a good thing we're not old. <laughs> <laughs> we're not weird at all. I'm like five years older than you. <laughs> no, more, no. How many? You're four, four years older than you. Actually, speaking of ancients, mm. I uh, had a small hike out into the uh, uh, forest <laughs> the other day. Yeah. So the thing was, <laughs> during the pandemic, uh, there has been a lot of uh, people going on road trips, right? Mm. So I looked up uh, grave mounds in the uh, area where you live. Yes. And I found a place called Dillingstad, yeah, which is like the island of Dillingstad, right? Yeah, that's not the one in the cover photo this week. No. But uh, we, yeah, you can talk about that one after. Continue, because you got this was kind of a cool topic. Yeah, it was kind of cool, because uh, we'll the thing it. was that I, I went there, and um, I there was a, uh, what's it called, a boom, a bar. Uh, the, the road was blocked by... Uh, Weird is rar. They're strange. Sorry, continue. Yeah. Uh, what, what's it called? That thing over there like that you can put up and down. Boom. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forget what that's called, but it's a barrier that blocks you from yeah, driving through. Yeah, you can put up and down or uh, you can open it. A gate, basically. Mm. Uh, so uh, there was a gate there and I stopped to check uh, because there was a farm there where the gate was closed. And they said it said on the sign that it's a prohibited area. And... Uh, you can drive there if you are allowed by the uh, landowner. Yeah. And uh, so I went out to the car looking for the landowner and, and the guy came up to me and he seemed really ir uh, irritated. <laughs> he seemed yeah. li a little bit annoyed. And it's like, and uh, I said, hello. And then he, he was like, what's your business here? <laughs> you know, like a uh, cold. And I was, well, I'm looking for the grave mounds because uh, I have, uh, I want to see them. I saw them on the map over here. Mm. And it's like, yeah, what's your business with the grave mounds? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I have no official business, I told him. No official business at all. It's just self-interest. I have some mm. um, ancestry from this area. So I'm kind of extra curious about this. Mm. But I'm also curious because I am uh, interested in grave mounds and that sort of thing. Because I am uh, into Viking reenactment and... Oh, okay. Yeah, then he kind of uh, thought a little bit up. It was a little bit more easy to talk to. Yeah. Uh, and then I told him that I was a blacksmith. And then he got really happy, actually. So he was like, in the end, he let me in there, not with the car, but he really spent a little bit of time explaining to me where exactly these were. Yeah. So it was a little bit of a hike over there. So I went from a car and uh, from your car, technically. Yeah, he, we <laughs> and, uh, ride uh, shared. Your car. We live in the same, uh, we live about within an hour of each other in the east part of Norway. 
Yeah. So we both went home for the week. So um, hmm. and then uh, I went out there and uh, went through the forest uh, and checked out um, hmm. because you need to Egg. walk through his uh, farmland to get there. Yeah. So you need to get to uh, the farmland, walk across his field, which mm -hmm. obviously will destroy crops if you're not careful. Yeah. So went into the forest and, uh, and then I um, posted a story on my Instagram and I said, I don't know where this is. I might, uh, I will keep you updated and uh, I might mm -hmm. find it eventually. I don't know if I will actually find it because I saw there was like a lot of it's, ups uh, and downs and Viking small hills if and you stuff. Find him. Yeah, Viking Blacksmith. Fruit probably link Viking him Blacksmith anyway, on she's Instagram. Such a good girl. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like literally just after I did that story, recorded that story, I, <laughs> I looked up and I was like, there it was. It was like literally 50 meters away, like uh, 50 yards away mm -hmm. from where I was. So uh, and then I went over. The thing is, it's very fascinating because this uh, spe specific grave uh, mound is not really a big mound or anything. It's three graves. Yeah. That has been, uh, there's a lot of stones that's mm. been propped up there and put on top of uh, someone's grave. And to me, it's, uh, it was obvious that this has been robbed at some point because they usually put treasures and stuff in there. Yeah. Uh, to, for them to take, a lot uh, of them take with robbed. them to the yeah. afterlife. And uh, not necessarily long after they were buried either. No, exactly. It was yeah. different customs in the Viking Age, as far as we know. And, uh, mm -hmm. We'll get into that after. Yeah, we'll get into that after. Yeah. And this uh, specific site, it was, there was um, three mounds, very mm -hmm. small ones. Uh, they seemed, to, one of them seemed to be untouched, actually. So it was on top of uh, the hill. Yeah. And it was about, I would say, maybe a maximum of uh, 10 meters in diameter. Um, but the funny thing is that there is um there is a statement in the Norse sagas that says something about uh the tree that grows on the grave it's like the tree it's the kind of symbolic to the person in there and in this specific uh, hmm. grave mound that i was in yeah there was a tree in the middle of it oh yeah, growing yeah. there a lot so of have really trees cool. growing out of them now yeah that's why they're hard to see yeah yeah even the ones in Bora. Yeah, it's kind of over, overgrown, but it was uh, it was very close in proximity to each mm. other. So I got some uh, pictures of it and uh, I posted it on my story, but mm. I'm still posting some uh, uh, Stone Circle fo photos, but stay tuned yeah. and uh, you'll see the... I took plenty of pictures. I'm planning to maybe put out four or five pictures from that place as well. Yeah, they're really cool. I put a bunch in my story, but mine's mostly needle binding, so I don't yeah. usually put them in anything else other than my story, but at some point I might just do one post. Yeah. On the mounds. Yeah. Got a couple of questions we'll get through. That's why my yeah. phone is pinging. Just one more thing. These yeah, were continue. not from the Viking Age. These were from the Bronze Age. For the Bronze, yeah. yeah. A lot but, of them are you know, iron. Or, yeah. Dreaming over there and sitting down there and kind of chilling out. I was mm -hmm. thinking, these might actually be my ancestors for all I know. <laughs> you never know. You know, you never know. Yeah. Uh, because it is the area where my family is originally from. Speedabag. Yeah, Speedabag. Yeah. So. Uh, I know the questions were, uh, let's see, Prudus sends them to me so I don't miss them in case I can't see. The chat because my eyes are getting ancient. There we go. Uh, one, I like this one. Do we need to name the sweater? Yes. Any and then, important artifact must be named. Uh, because she suggests Steve. Steve the sweater. Steve the sweater. I don't know. Yeah, can it could I, be. Can it I can... translate Steve as in stiff into Old Norse? <laughs> oh, yeah. S -T -E. Then I'm in. S-T-I-V. Steve. That means stiff. Anybody Steve. know what Steve or <laughs> stiff means in all? I don't Norse? think we can give the blacksmithy a stiffy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Carl shouldn't watch this. Oh, are you leaving, Cecilia? Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> She's got to go. Nice. Thank you, Cecilia. And I will call you later. So my poor daughter calls herself trash, but I think she wants to be uh, funny that way. Uh, anyway, so no, I've always just, you know what? It's kind of gotten the name the blacksmith sweater. So it might. What is that in this Old Norse? This is the black sweater. No. <laughs> Smed gensur. Smidur. Smidur. Gensur. Gensur. Did the Vikings have null bound sweaters? Did they have? We're going to have to keep digging because the only thing we found in the Viking Age in Scandinavia is a mitten. Two, actually, one in Finland, I think, and then one in uh, Sweden during the Viking I Age. I can tell you what, though. Mm. If they had it, they would have used them. 
Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure. The other that. thing is they haven't even found hats, no hats, no cowls, no socks. Even the sock was found in your Vic, which yeah, is yeah. in the right time frame. So if it's a Scandinavian foot, which I think is what DNA shows, it's a Scandinavian foot, so we can take that stitch. Well the thing is, yeah? uh, would they have had needle bound sweaters in the Viking Age? But you know, they had the technique. How quickly things degrade in the ground. Yeah. Uh we cannot know for sure, in my opinion, because it's no. very random what you find and why they are being preserved in the ground. Mm. Uh, not random, but it's random that they have been pre pre preserved. Yep. So because it's about uh, the soil and uh, acidity and stuff like that. And then like there's all the miscellaneous women's work that was thrown. Yeah. And I'm thinking uh, we have just um, been updated uh, a little bit about the... Uh, burial rituals and stuff like that. Yeah. And one thing that is being emphasized by Neil Price about this uh, is in Neil Price is a very good author. He's a professor, I think, in Sweden. Uh, Archaeologist, I think. Arche yeah. yeah, professor in archaeology. Uh, he's really good, though. Neil yeah. Price. It's the Children of Ashen Elm. We've mentioned this book before. Yeah. It is and really good. It's very, very informative and very nice. And the thing is, um, mm. what he emphasizes all mm. throughout is when people were buried in mounds or in chamber chamber graves as we call it. i'll go get into what that is mm. uh, in a little bit um it seems that they would not use anything that was mundane or anything that was normal to wear they mm. would use the very best of materials uh they would use the best clothing the best artifacts because and, you're going to uh, the uh going to the afterlife and yep. uh you a big party in the sky probably comfortable to wear those types of clothes uh if the they're fancy clothes and uh, nice clothes as well yeah not like a suit today or uh, no. like uh, so well i think it's comfortable wearing a suit as well but uh, if you have silk uh clothing obviously it's comfortable so mm. um they but then a lot, of, um, a lot of bodies were burned too, so that's why we don't have exactly. much Exactly, so it's, uh, it's very mm. interesting to see how different uh, the different customs were uh, of burial. Or, uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, Drea makes a good point there too. Uh, people have always been resourceful and creative, and so she's guessing, yes, needle-bound sweaters. It could be, but you're planning on wearing yours under a tunic because it is quite obvious uh, it's it's quite obvious that it's a sweater anyway, um, and that is something that hasn't been found. So if anybody he needs it to keep warm, etc. So, yeah. but so he can always. I mean, we do own it. Like uh, the size of my hood, is it's the same hood as you have, but Anders is more of an authentic size than mine. You can see mine goes way down, and even then, I think it might have been actually a little bit shorter than that. The sh shoulder hood, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I use it to. I want to keep my shoulders dry. <laughs> Well, so that's kind of things like that. relative, it's I think, practical. to the size of the person as well. Because yeah, this be. one would be the right size if I was twice as big, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. What I mean? But or, I need yeah. mine as like rain gear, so yeah. I have mine longer. But and put this just one on on, uh, on Cecilia, mm. and it would be uh, massively huge for yeah, her. Yeah, that would so be perfect for uh, her. But uh, yeah. Oh, so then there was a couple more questions. Yeah, and then I can uh, Is the virus on the rise? Oh, the, vi the virus is on the rise here in Manitoba, so we are very restricted. They were asking about that. Yep. Uh, we are coming from, that's another reason why we're sending from here, though, is we are coming from East Norway to West Norway. So we also kind of have to stick to our cohort. Fortunately, our cohort is very small, so it's quite easy to do. But you never mm. you never know. I mean, we're um, there hasn't been a single case of reported uh, corona in our municipality. Well, there's three cases, but there's they don't two actually cases, live. But yeah. one of them is a foreign worker that was stopped mm. uh, on the border. But yep. he was registered in the in the municipality. Yep. And the second one was a student who was registered also mm. as living there, but he res uh, was living in Bergen actually yep. at the time. So the his registered one, address uh, was here. But the third one was in uh, at attending a wedding in a nearby party that just suddenly shot yeah. up to like seventy yeah. some people. So and, I, uh, but they there don't actually been live a in a single Arnold. actual case in the municipality. Nope. And we don't want to be the ones to bring it. No, so. strike wood or touch so there wood. There you go. <laughs> No, uh, there was a couple of more questions, and then I can show you a little bit of what about needlebound, and then we'll tell you more about the yeah, picture that we saw. Uh, so, is mathematics considered easy if it's women's work? Mathematics. <laughs> I think she called you stupid. I no. don't <laughs> understand what you're uh, what you're asking. Can it you it ask doesn't me, add up. <laughs> can, you, can you simplify the question a little bit because it's uh, too complex. It's definitely women's work. <laughs> too compli. <laughs> it doesn't it's add compliment up. Compli uh, compl complimentary. Complimentary. Yeah. Complicated. No, I had a word I couldn't say earlier, it? and it's very similar to that. <laughs> what was it? Uh, 
can, can I don't really know how to say this, anyway. but you know, it's a compliment. Worcestershire, 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 Worcestershire. And I don't say it right either because I'm saying it American. I say yeah. Worcestershire, anyway. which is wrong. Uh, <laughs> Arlene's going to make turn shoes this weekend. Uh, turn shoes, and is that considered men's men's work or women's work? According to uh, a leather worker that yeah. I know, you need to have uh, quite an extreme strength in your fingers uh, when you uh, uh, push it out. Mm -hmm. Oh, but that same leather worker, male leather worker, said that it couldn't be done by a female. It was too hard, and Siri proved him wrong. Yeah. She, uh, yeah, and she just I, soaked him uh, in I extra I have to hard. emphasize, by the way, uh, yeah. speaking of genders and that sort of stuff, I don't have the opinion that this is uh, some th this is not my opinion. This yeah. is historical stuff that I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to offend someone by saying that this is this or this is that. Too late, you um, male chauvinist pig. <laughs> I'm just yeah, kidding. I get that. And then uh, so because I feel that uh, it doesn't really matter if you Most are a man sense. doing uh, archetypally female work. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter uh, if you want to do it. I'm all about free will. So. <laughs> I don't care which gender you are or whatever you feel that you are. Yeah. So uh, I, <laughs> I don't apply this principle in reality today, obviously. No, no, no. So, but but they, I, I wanted to mention it because Arigir is a concept that they were very concerned mm. with in the Viking Age. So, and it's a cultural thing that we luckily have put aside. So, yeah. Because there are. Uh, women had a lot of rights and uh, had more rights than most cultures actually in those times. They did in that uh, specific time mm -hmm. uh, period. It was uh, massively better in, in the Nordic countries as well, yeah. even though they weren't actually completely equal because uh, they could speak at a thing. I think. Yeah the uh, the way to uh, the way to um, gain uh, a vote on the thing, the uh, governing organ uh, of a gathering mm. of uh, all. Farm owners. Really. <laughs> They're stuck on Worcestershire sauce. Yeah. So here's a good uh, one. Peruda the, pointed. Uh, yeah. The, the way to get that for yeah. a woman was that if your husband died and you yep. inherited the farm. Yeah, but the could thing is, have a the uh, it, at the same time in England, for example, you are literally the man's property. So mm. it's not. Uh, but you could get a divorce. Is, you could get a divorce, but this varies. All you had to do uh, was make your husband show his nipple on accident. Well, that was uh, at <laughs> a, a specific time as well, during yeah. the Viking Age. Yeah. So on Iceland at some point, yeah, a woman actually made a sweater or like a tunic for her husband that was too low, which was seen as a female thing to have. And uh, she pointed it out. And as Carl says, he, look, man, he dresses like a man. I wanted a woman. I want a divorce. Yeah. So she <laughs> uh, she got a divorce on those grounds, even though she made this, uh, the, uh, the item herself. Yeah. So it was a clever way of doing it. And uh, they could get it. Uh, it seems to me, I seem to remember that they it varied very greatly from the beginning yeah. of the Viking Age and to the end of it. Uh, seems to me that it was at some time periods within the Viking Age, a woman could get a divorce just by saying, I want a divorce. Yeah. But I don't, I can't identify exactly which. No, I think you're uh, right, times. actually. I think that is actually mentioned. Uh, at some point, uh, some other points, it was not possible for a woman, but it was possible for a man. Mm. So it seems to me that it, it changed uh, during those times, yeah. and it probably. Meanwhile, I will changed, point out uh, that I am mending Carl's tunic, so that's a good sign for him, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't uh, give him the uh, female version, though. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> well, if, unless you want a divorce, though. <laughs> uh, uh, it was one that pointed out that there was a tourist that climbed over the fence behind us. That was the guy who oh, wanted yeah. to take photos. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so you can buy a ticket to go in there uh, to go and take a look at the church. Uh, normally, it's open when it's uh, so that you can walk around, but it's closed right now, so we can't. But anyhow, the last thing about the uh, the uh, uh, these uh, type of cultural uh, uh, yep. what well, you know about marriage and divorce and all that, I think it also varied greatly job, between Arlene. areas. So one thing might have been normal in one area. Sweden, for example, and then it mm -hmm. might have been completely different yep. to the west of Norway, for example. And you see this, uh, the, the reason why I'm saying that is, mm. is most of the archaeological uh, findings that we find is, is also very different. So uh, about the graves and stuff, yeah, uh, it seems that uh, chamber graves, which is, um, let me try to explain this uh, uh, from, from memory only. Um, Mm. It's a, uh, they made a chamber for the dead, which was a simulation of a house, kind of. Mm. So it was approximately two meters tall, 
uh, so that you can stand upright in it. And uh, it was enough room inside that space to uh, simulate a mm. dwelling, kind of. What's going on? No, I just thought I saw somebody. Didn't. No, it's okay. okay. <laughs> It was a shadow. It looked like someone was in my car. <laughs> it's ah. not. And um, so <clears throat> they made this properly with timber and everything. <clears throat> and in Gretir's saga, it is explained that uh, uh, someone chops their way through to a uh, grave, uh, inside a grave, a mm -hmm. um, uh, burial chamber. Uh, and they, they are chopping through the logs, and it's a very uh, interesting explanation. I haven't read the whole of Greta's saga, but I'm going to now, because it's an explanation about the Draugr. You've had an inspirational the, week, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. Uh, so the thing is, um, one of the things that you saw on the cover photo anyway, we went to Hun, isn't it? Hun Steinringen or Hun Stone Circles? Yeah, Hun Steinring Felt. Yeah. It's a field of uh, that's stone near, circles. Just outside of Frederikstad. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, very close to Sweden, um, the border of Sweden near Gothenburg. Uh, oh, uh, Arlene wrote that. Yeah, she's definitely strong enough to work with leather, but she can't do metal work. So here's one for you, Arlene. Siri, the one that I mentioned that wanted to prove the leather worker wrong, that she could actually turn the shoes. She can blacksmith. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. You can do whatever. I think, you know, you can do whatever you want. If yeah. you want, if you set yeah, your mind yeah. to it, just do it. See, it's uh, pretty good at blacksmithing. And I don't think that was a time where they were actually very restricted. Nope, you're not allowed to do that. If it needed to be done, you just <clears> do <throat> it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, another thing about uh, professions and stuff. Yeah. It's uh, like, this is also something that I might have mentioned before, but I'm yeah. just going to say it again because it's uh, interesting. Yeah, but not everybody watches every episode. No, so. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We're at 62 in now. In India, there are, there's a caste 61? system. And uh, it's not really, as far as I can understand, from the start of it, it wasn't meant as a class system as such. But it was meant like, uh, if I'm a blacksmith, I would want to marry a blacksmith's daughter. Oh, yeah. Because she would know her way around the blacksmith shop. And she would learn, too. <clears throat> yeah, but if I marry a princess... She's not going to know heads or tails about what I do for work. So she can't help me out in the smithy. Nope, and you need to get money somehow. <clears throat> yeah, and as a couple in the Viking Age, moving from India to the Viking Age, mm -hmm. I would suppose it was somewhat the same thing. So uh, you would want to do things in a practical way. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, someone is uh, used to uh, leatherworking, for example, their yeah. father is a leatherworker, they would know the tools, they would know mm. the methods, they would, could even come with a uh, few tips about how to do things So mm. and do it themselves. I wouldn't be able to turn shoes, but I have copper tunnel in both hands, so yeah. Wrist, wrists. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was another thing. I will show you my needle binding real quick, and then uh, Anders can tell you everything that he learned about the graves because he's a better listener than I am, and plus you, uh, you're a little more spir spiritual than I am too, so you might have a different point of view. Hand me the gray thing, that one. Yeah, the color, but I'm telling them the, the one that looks white. I thought it was pink. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this was done. It's finally finished. It's the cowl. I think I have it inside out, actually. <clears throat> Sorry. Yep. We'll do a little hair and needle binding. So I used up all the wool I have on this, and I actually went back and picked up and made it a little taller than it was, if you remember when I had it. So now it's a little longer than I would have thought, but it'll work. But that's a cowl. Really wonderful wool. Super soft. I forget what it's called. I'm going to have to check that out. But anyway, it's my mom's stash. So this is all I had of it, and it's a thing. Then I have one more hat in that bag if you want to show. Yeah. Oh, no, it's in the plastic. Oh, fuck. Just hand me the whole bag. Sorry, you don't listen to my words. Good thing my kid's not watching anymore. That's, yeah, this is one as a cowl. I might make it longer. I don't know. Make it like a boof. I don't know, but it's a cowl. This one is made with sulka. Every time I see that online, I buy it up because it went, uh, they stopped making it almost 10 years ago. But it's alpaca with 20, uh, with 15% uh, silk in it. So it's so soft. And the colors are good. That's the one, yeah. There you go. So I decided I need to use up this wool too. So I made another hat. It's a little tight on me though. Somebody was talking about having a big head. Here you go. I'm. <laughs> this is cute. I should probably sew the ends in. And then... I will show you these a little closer in a minute. I made another hat because I have, this is fat yarn and it works fast and I need to use up yarn. These are all silka. Uh, but okay, now the close-ups. 
Ah, the sun is finally going behind something. Okay, this is York F2, but it is tightened to my thumb. You can see there's a couple stitches that need to be pulled because of the silk. It's hard to, um, to splice the ends, so I did a lazy join. So when I pull these strings tighter and tuck them in, then that little bump will go away. So that's what that is. Damn it. <laughs> I tried to get the bag to go from blowing away <laughs> with the hat and it missed. Uh, the other hat, the pink hat, I made that with dollar no stitch. I think that one's gonna blow too. There we go. Okay, and dollar no is kind of cool. This is the dollar no one. Looks like basket weave, that's why I like it so much, but it does hug. So they're actually the same size, these two, but one looks smaller because it hugs more. The, this is the right side, as you know, blind, which means it's facing you. And this is the wrong side. Again, I have to splice. But you can see the wrong side looks almost like garter stitch and knit. So there really is no octopus hats. Oh my God, you're right. You know, it almost looks a bit like... Um, Crap, I just forgot the name of it. Those ones from Newfoundland where they have the thing sticking out. Uh, thrums, a thrummed hat. But anyway, so you can choose whichever side you like, right or wrong. This is F1. F1 is the connection type. This one and this one are Oslo. Right side and uh, showing here. But most people are familiar with Oslo. This is Oslo F2 because I wanted it to be a little denser on him because the wool is tired. So there's, you can't really see the difference between F1 and F2 but in, in view, but the, this one is just a little denser, that's all. So that is, okay. And then I've got, of course, a million things I started and didn't finish because, hello. Okay, so now, talk more about graveyards. I did my null binding. I'm gonna keep working on your sweater. I may or may not finish it this century. <laughs> well, <clears throat> you guys have any, um... Well, I can, I can actually, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Yeah, stick them in there. The, uh, if we don't know, we'll look it up. Yeah. Not today, though, but um, there's a lot of these. The, uh, what we listened to in the car is um, the, the section of... Chapter 8. Chapter 8 of uh, is, Children of Ash and Elm. Has everything to do with death. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. Um, oh, I love that book. So... One of the things that struck me as very interesting is the difference between, for example, Sweden and Norway, especially Western Norway. In Western yeah. Norway, it's... So that's where uh, Gudvangen is. There's less, um, less chamber graves. Mm. Sorry, I got some wool in my mouth. So <laughs> I don't know where you got the wool in your mouth from. <laughs> that's plenty over here. <laughs> Welcome to a needlebinder's needle life. <laughs> so, um, and... Uh, um, yeah. You were talking about Western Norway... Western Norway as uh, opposed to Eastern Norway. The burials we, were different, yeah. Yeah. We also stopped by um, the uh, Husebe Gård today. Yep. Took some photos on the way up here. That one I actually put in the in my Instagram, so if you're really quick and yeah. you see the story. That's, or on um, Facebook, you don't have to follow, you can follow, you don't have to friend. Two uh, grave chambers, uh, two, two chamber graves. Uh, that is a grave mounds, big ones. Mm. Uh, without ships in them, <clears throat> the big the ship graves are huge, <laughs> obviously because oh, the ships yeah. are huge. Oh, but, but there's it another one. That, yeah, it seems to me that uh, they seem to think that a ship was necessary or some kind of transport device was mm -hmm. necessary to get to the other side, which is very interesting because uh, when uh, there are some pictorial stones on Gotland. Gotland, Gotland is Sweden. Yeah, it's an island outside of Stockholm. Yeah, I think it was Gotland. Gotland. Yeah, uh, don't was. quote me on that, but no, it, it was, is. Uh, yeah, and uh. Uh, these are without writing on it. So, but it's pictorial. So some of them are have the uh, kind of like cartoonish um, depictions on it, uh, so that you have a story that uh, just like we read cartoons uh, mm -hmm. from uh, left to right, for example, uh, these go up like this on a bow. Uh, some of them. Some mm. of them move from left to right. And um, most of them, it's interesting that where you don't have ship burials, all the stones show ships on the stones. So it's kind of like they're trying mm -hmm. to uh, depict boats so that they can get to the other side. Mm. It's a quite interesting thing. Uh, 
what did the uh, Icelanders or the Islanders do for graves? Uh, like, uh, I was, to, I gotta go a little closer. Austavola, loads of cremation. Yeah, the I cremation. don't know if that's what they did exactly there, but the cremation they talked about. Yeah, it's and, varied. Uh, it's very I don't know varied. About uh, yet. <laughs> whether or not they did uh, cremation, and it's. Um, it seems that uh, cremation was mostly done in Sweden. Uh, Sweden uh, oh, upheld the cremation for a very long time. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? Have you, have I you... attached the yarn to this sleeve and then I decided to needle bind the other sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> the What's story that? is too interesting. It's so hard to be a needle binder. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> this is the second time I've done something stupid with your sweater today. <laughs> so. Uh, it seems that cremation was uh, a lot more uh, common in Sweden than it was in Norway, for example. So the further east you get, uh, the more burning you get as well. Uh, Ibn Fadlan, Ahmed mm. Ibn Fadlan, was sent as a, um, as a more or less a kind of a secretary bodyguard uh, up with, from his uh, sultan, I think it's called. Um, Oh, it was a, yeah, wasn't but, he but part of the... At the end of his story, this yeah. is actually a very long uh, story that he writes. So it's... it's uh, well, you I got about 10 minutes. To find it. <laughs> so yeah. uh, if anyone knows where to actually find the source material for mm. Ibn Fadlan, I would really like Carl, to... Uh, Carl would probably be able to find that out for Yeah, you. I haven't been able to find it. It seems no. that it's like an internal uh, university but due kind to of the, that you can get access to it or something. Would due to the Hago tours, he's been researching a lot of oh, extra yeah. things yeah, lately. So be interesting to, to He just did a segment on medicine. There's a lot more information in Ibn Fadlan's uh, writing than I thought about because I thought it was just a small uh, description oh, of no, a no, Viking no. burial. They but there's that. a whole... A uh, story about how he traveled, where he traveled. Thirteenth and... Warrior, the character of uh, Antonio Manderas, is yeah. based on uh, even not based on even Fadlan, but inspired by even Fadlan. Supposed Fadlan. to be even Fadlan, I think. I think he is supposed to. I don't. Yeah, so, yeah, no, he does yeah, say. It. Yeah, he does. Uh, his character is. I yeah. don't remember his, his name. I think it is even. I thought they said even. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, so uh, there's uh, this uh, description of the ritual, which is very much uh, the basis of how we view a Viking burial at the time. Mm. But there are some very interesting things as well uh, that uh, I didn't know about. Yep. For example, they seem to have buried uh, or performed r ritual burials, either uh, if there were uh, actual uh, inhumations, like you bury people in the ground, or if you burn them, Ooh. it seems to have been done during the night. Mm. It was never done during the day because it's, it's uh, mentioned that uh, they were watching the moon, uh, the full moon, while yeah. they were doing this. Um, there is um, descriptions of lighting within the burial chamber. Some places you have uh, candles mm. that's just been burnt and you, there, there's, the candle is still there. Yeah. It's been burnt, but it's uh, obvious that the, the candle has been put out by the uh, oxygen deprivation of the chamber mm. uh, when it's been closed up. Yeah, that's right. I remember and reading about that. No, we were talking, like yeah, we're small talking facts about that today. like that, I think it's very fascinating because yeah. uh, that's very much to do with the specifics of how they actually would do things. And it mm. says something about the ambience that they had. And, uh, I wonder if we can see it. Yeah, you can still see the church pretty well. I can lift it up a little bit there. It's uh, It depends on where the light is. So I either get the sky or I get the church. Sky, church. <laughs> Anders will take a crap load of pictures of it. Trust me, we're not getting out of here until he's posed <laughs> with it. It's hard to be an Insta-Viking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Anders, uh, of course, I'm interrupting constantly. Uh, do you know about the Viking festivals in Shetland Islands? I didn't know the Viking fire festivals. They were talking about fire. I've yeah, been, they they uh, and the other one is torches uh, through the streets and stuff. They want to hear about your ring too, and I know you made that. Oh, uh, no, I didn't actually. Crap. This is, uh, Why not? You can make something similar though. This, uh, You're a blacksmith. Secret stuff, you know. So it's, secret uh, stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, can we look at a little closer? I like this. Is actually a kind of ring I like. It's a snake. Keeps me from flying out of my body. But you've so. made some very well, not serpent, but with twists that my kid wears actually um, in iron. It's made of copper. This one's made of copper, yeah, but the one you made my kids, I mean, is made of iron. Your yeah. copper, your iron is looking very pink. No, <laughs> red. 
No, anyway. I wouldn't know actually. <laughs> okay, continue talking. You have 10 more minutes of sending. Oh, well, uh, in that case, yeah, uh, yeah. well, uh, what was the... Okay, so we had we had different kinds of burials, though. For one, they have the burning one. And the thing with the ship I thought was kind of fun, because to put one thing in perspective, they're a Yellingstad or um, in Halden, just outside of Halden in, uh, on the border of uh, Sweden and Norway. It's on the Norwegian side. There's a huge mound there, and we were all so sure that there was a Viking ship in there. Turns out there is a Viking ship there, but it's not in the big mound. It's in the flat earth next to it, so they apparently could dig. They dug down a bit, too. Yeah. Yeah. But then they also have stone rings. Stone piles, chambers. Well, fire. the thing is, um, there are approximately fourteen thousand Viking graves How in to the bury Scandinavian a Viking. areas. You could write a book on that. Fourteen thousand graves. Yeah. And uh, we're talking massive, massive, massive amounts of uh, graves here. Mm. So I was looking for a grave, and then I found a grave. And heaven knows I'm miserable now. <laughs> oh, you sing the like same songs to no, me. No, <laughs> it's not a prophecy. I promise. It's not a prophecy. Anyway, so uh, there are graves everywhere. They're everywhere. And uh, there are differences between them. Yeah. And uh, I promise by the next time uh, I'm on here, I I'll will be on Saturday do next a week. little bit more reading because hmm. now I'm only in the stage of being absolutely fascinated by all this information that I've received today. Oh, yeah. About um, the lighting of the graves. And there are stories from, I don't remember the name of the saga, but there's a uh, the daughter of a Viking who has uh, uh, plans to avenge her father. And she ventures onto an island. Uh, it's between the three big Danish islands. There is a place where there's supposed to be a grave area, mm. and uh, it was apparently it was lit during the night by torches and stuff. Yeah. So, and uh, the story goes that this is also very interesting. Like one thing takes the other. <laughs> and, uh, He's very inspired this week. Yeah. This is very, what happens when Vikings leave the Viking village. About this, uh, because what she uh, what what is written about her is that. She makes this, she forces this uh, guide uh, or ferryman or something to go in there with her yeah. to show her the way to the grave of her father. Yeah. And uh, uh, this is during the night. So you're not, apparently you're not supposed to go into a graveyard at night because they seem to think that there were something called draugr, which is the dead rising again. And Carl they were is a draugr. Massively stronger than they were in human life. And they, some of them grew bigger and stronger. And most of the Draugr uh, was people who had been really bad in their lives. They were okay, uh, not really a Draugr. and uh, <laughs> like, you know, manipulative people and uh, yeah. like sidemen, for example. Like Sider uh, is uh, male practi practitioners of magic, which yep. was reserved to women. But uh, worship of gods were, uh, uh, you could be a Gothi. Uh, on a farm, for example, which is a conductor of ceremonies, wedding ceremonies or whatever. G-O-T-H-E, isn't it? G-O-T-H-I. Uh, okay. That's a Godi, but it's a transliteration for uh, yeah. the uh, D from uh, the runic alphabet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gothi, Gothi. Yeah. So, um, but <laughs> the, uh, like, the magic <laughs> and uh, fortune telling or, you know, uh, divination, stuff like that. Yeah. That was reserved for women. Men couldn't touch it. <laughs> so there was a lot of things that were prohibited for men. Uh, so it's more constrictive for men in that sense, in a way, in my mm -hmm. opinion. But anyway, so the thing is, I've digressed completely here. <laughs> that's okay. Charlotte says you know too much, so that's good. <laughs> Runa Tobias is here. Hey, hey. I'm uh, just very good at bullshitting. Carl is supposed yeah. to be here, Runa Tobias, but as you can see, we didn't make it to Gudvangen yet. We had, so we're sending from Borga instead. Borgund instead. Borgund Stave Church. Okay, continue. That was Carl's nephew. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. So, he sends uh, the uh, rune. Where was I? Yeah. Yep. They were, so the, um, anyway, the, uh, the, the daughter of this uh, guy that has been murdered, well, she I'm seeks his revenge. So she, she is going to uh, oh. yeah. retrieve his sword. That is uh, the whole story kind of thing. Hmm. She says to the uh, to the dead, she has an address to the dead and says, if you do not aid me in my, um, in my endeavor, mm -hmm. I will see to it that you are not, you, that, you, that you stay in your graves. 
And this is oh, very yeah. interesting that because in book, yeah. uh, it, it, it touches upon something that is archaeologically proven in different areas is that it's uh, exhumation or you dig out the bones mm. of dead people that you have buried, mm -hmm. clean the bones, and then you dig them down somewhere else. So it seems to be just like when you burnt people, uh, then you took out uh, their bones and most of it was burned away. They even took the ash, yeah. They took the ashes and then they buried it somewhere else. But opposed to, as opposed to uh, today, we have incineration ovens that is extremely efficient. Mm. So you only get dust and ashes left of it. I think the only things that might be left is the teeth or something. Yeah. But um, so I think that they said on there that on a male human being, you are left with approximately four kilos of ashes after yeah. a person has been cremated. And approximately, uh, on average, uh, three kilos of ashes from a female. Mm. So, uh, but in the um, excavations yeah. of Viking graves, if there has been a cremation, only one kilo is left. So where did they put the rest? They don't know. Maybe they scattered it somewhere. Maybe they had like rituals of uh, putting it in the water, putting it to the air, you know? Yeah. So it's quite interesting. So, but uh, what she's touching on is uh, very interesting because she is speaking to the dead as if they're just lying there and being heard. And I suspect that this this person that she was forcing to go in there at night yeah. might have been one of those uh, kind of a funeral agent kind of, yeah. Because uh, maybe his job was to be a, uh, what we call a rocker in, uh, in Norwegian. Well, I want to say rocker, but that's not, yeah. but that's um, not it. <laughs> and I'll tell you in a minute what that means. Uh, and um, maybe his job was, for example, to dig out the bones, mm -hmm. clean them, and put them somewhere else. Uh, rocker is incidentally from the, uh, for, at least they used it up until the 18th century when mm. we still had executions in Norway. Uh, a rocker is a person who... Uh, is the executioner, he lives just outside the settlement mm. uh, and uh, he will normally do sewer work and if ah. there is anything that needs to be grime, grimy work that's really nobody else wants to touch it, mm. he has to do it. So it's kind of like <laughs> a form of punishment and some, I think some convicts were uh, like, uh, had the choice or were sentenced to being rockere. <laughs> so when we, and the funny thing about Charlotte this is that when we say <laughs> to... Kind. Children, do you have a little rocker? Yeah, rocker, yeah, rocker, rocker. That is someone that's on the outside of the village and it's unwanted, kind of like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You know? So it's it's uh, an old, very old uh, term for it, and I believe that this is a very old custom as well. <laughs> it's uh, the untouchable. You know, mm -hmm. he is. You don't want to get near him because he might be f like stinking of sewer, yeah. sewers and bodies, and you know. <laughs> Okay, so there's Regina. Regina says, uh, Night Burial is new to me. Interesting. Regina, look! <laughs> it's, it's a sweater. It just needs the extra length now. <laughs> it might actually get done in 2021. <laughs> anyway, Regina's been following passionately the process of this sweater yeah, and progress yeah. in the sweater. Well, okay, I, I raise your hand. I highly recommend Neil Price as a source yeah. for this because he is it's writing Children in a very nice way Elm and it's very informative. Book. Oh, he's very good. Very he's got lots of books. at the same time. Okay, so raise your hand if you think Anders needs to come and we need to continue this topic next week when Carl is here too, because we're out of time. And obviously you can see we have a whole crap load. It was a really good tour anyway. And then in the meantime, you can check him out on uh, Instagram because he's posting the pictures from the grave mounds we were at. Uh, and the only reason I'm doing that, raise your hand if you want to hear more, is because we got one minute left yeah. and 10% battery on my computer. Yes, more Anders. Can you come on Saturday next week, 6 o'clock? Six, which date is that? The 29th. I believe I can. I'm not promising anything. I don't believe you know you can. <laughs> <laughs> believe. I might be working, actually, so I'm not okay. absolutely sure. But I will do my very best. You will and do your very best. if I can't, I will do the next time. Okay. But if you can't, yeah, 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 that's right. But anyway, if you can, otherwise the next one will... Got to check uh, because we have, this, we have some certain schedule clashes. That's why some of them are like today or on Friday. Yeah, so we will do one on the 29th, but the... Love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> next one will either be on the... Yeah, I don't know. The next one will be either the 4th or the 5th, Friday or Saturday. I'm not quite sure yet. Yeah. We have to a couple yeah. more planning to do. Okay, but uh, next week, the 29th is Saturday at 6 o'clock. 
and we will be in good luck in this. And we're about an hour away right now. <laughs> uh, Oh, I'm so glad you, well, I'm glad you enjoyed the surprise. This is not good Vong and that's not Carl, but it is Anders. <laughs> Bye, so, guys. Thanks for joining us, Have and we'll nice see you one. next week. Oh, wait, we got one more second. There, now it's been an hour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you next week. And there, and... <laughs>